Hello my dear students, we have already finished three laws of Mendel that were law of dominance, law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Now please make a point that all the three laws can come in one word and that is mentalism. So if mentalism is asked to you what is it, you will be writing about the three laws that were given by Mendel. Now, as I said when I was explaining law of dominance that it is not at all universally applicable. Till the time Mendel was alive, he was never knowing that he had laid an important foundation. But after his death, some scientists, they reworked upon his concepts and law of incomplete dominance was the output of it. This law is totally against the law of dominance we are going to study the details of it. So stay focused in this video. First of all, we will see in which plants it occurs. Examples are going to be important because sometimes they give the name of the plant in the board examination and they ask you, does this plant follow the law of dominance? Then you must remember that it doesn't, right? So the first name is Enter High Num Majors. This is the name of the plant. It is the scientific name. Thus we need to underline genus and species name separately. And the common name has to be learned too because this is also important. The next example is Mirabilis Jalapa. Now, whenever you are remembering the scientific names of the plants, always learn them by writing. Because if you commit mistake in writing the scientific names, it will lead to reduction of marks. And the common name of it is 4 o'clock plant. So, these are the two plants which never ever follow the law of dominance. Now let's see how. We are talking about the character which is flower color. We are making a genetic cross. We are taking parents. We have taken one parent as red. And Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon for the recent updates. Another parent as with white flowers, red we have taken as male, white we have taken as female, the genotype of red is capital R, capital R and the genotype of white is small r, small r. Of course, after this law of segregation will happen and this will result in the formation of gametes. So out of these two, only one will come. Out of these two small r's, only one r will come. Now as these gametes, they are going to fuse, they will produce the F1 generation. And F1 generation genotype would be capital R, small r. Now here the difference will come. And that difference is going to be important. If you have not seen my video on law of dominance, please do watch it. Because then only you will be able to understand the differences. See here, the genotype is capital R, small r. If it would have been a law of dominance, then the expression here would have been red. But in these plants, the expression is pink. See here, there is one dominant allele, capital R. There is one recessive allele, small r. See here, neither the expression of dominant allele is coming and nor the expression of recessive allele is seen. That means mixed expression has been seen. Because while doing coloring also, if you take red color and you mix it with white color, what color do you get? Yes, you get pink color. So here in the case of incomplete dominance, 
you must remember a joint expression is seen. Neither the expression of dominant allele will come in the F1 generation nor the expression of recessive allele will come. Now we will see how the F2 generation of springs will be there in these plants. You know that whenever you cross F1 with L1 or whenever you do selfing, it becomes F2. So F1 when it is selfed, it could be written like this also. And this symbol is defining here the selfing process, means the self-pollination, right? So if you are crossing two parents with capital R, small r genotype, means the parents are heterozygous for a character, right? So when the gametes will form, and you know that whenever gametes are formed, law of segregation is always applied. So here two gametes will be formed. Here also two gametes will be formed. Suppose we have considered this as to be the male parent and this has to be the female parent. Now we will prepare the Punnett square, how each organism will be produced. So these are the gametes of male parent and these are the gametes of female parent on the y-axis. While writing the Punnett square, always mention male gametes here on the x-axis and female gametes always on the y axis. Now we already know how to write the genotype of the organisms. We are doing it and these are the genotypes of our four individuals. Now see here two R's are there and these R's are capital. And if you remember we took in the beginning, the genotype of the parent as capital R, capital R and its phenotype was red. So here also, the phenotype will remain red. But see here, in the next case, capital R, small r is there. And we are studying which two plants? We are studying Antirhinum majors and we are studying Mirabilis jalapa. So, in the case of heterozygous organism, they never show the expression of the dominant allele. They will show mixed expression. So, in this case, the phenotype will be pink. Here in this case, same concept will be applied and the expression will be pink. Now, here this is homozygous recessive and we took in the beginning female as to be the homozygous recessive. So in this case, the expression will be white. So you can see here that if we will calculate the phenotypic ratio of incomplete dominance in F2 generation, then we have got three types of individuals, red, pink and white. How many individuals are there with red color? 1. With pink color? 2. With white color? 1. See here, 1 red is there, 2 pink are there and 1 white is there. So our phenotypic ratio will become 1 is to 2 is to 1. Right? Now we will see how is the genotypic ratio in the case of incomplete dominance. See here, we have received three different types of genotypes. Always you have to move from first column up to down, second column up to down. This is the rule while you are calculating the genotypic ratios. So first individual is capital R, capital R this one and we have only one of such type. The next individual is capital R small r. This is also capital R small r so it will be counted all together and this will make two and then of course our last individual is 
small r small r and we have only one with such genotype that means our genotypic ratio has came to be 1 ratio 2 ratio 1 that means what have you concluded phenotypic ratio was 1 is to 2 is to 1 here and genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 that means in the case of incomplete dominance if we are considering monohybrid cross then genotypic and phenotypic ratios are same this is very very important in next video we will compare law of dominance using a monohybrid cross and we will compare it with the law of incomplete dominance right so stay tuned next video is again going to be an important one thank you so much if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so because it will really help you.